When it comes time to getting married, we of course all want it to be for life. Sometimes it goes that way, sometimes it doesn't. Either way, both are fine. But when it comes to making that decision and taking the plunge per se, we really need to make sure that we consider a whole bunch of variables before committing our life to someone else. And coming from an Asian culture where it's so frowned upon if you haven't gotten married by a certain age or as a woman from a very young age you get taught that your job in the society is to eventually get married and have a husband and have a family. That and only that should be your priority. It's very rare to have families encourage you to pursue a career and not really be concern yourself with getting married. So because of the such prominent pressure on us, we end up making the wrong decisions sometimes when it comes to our life partners. And then who's left to pay the price for that? We are. Where, be it our mistake or our family's mistakes, we are still left to be the ones that pays the price for that. And in order to avoid that, there are certain things that we need to take into account when it comes time to getting married. So if you haven't been to my page, welcome, I'm Hamasa. I look at personal development as well as mental and emotional well-being and just day-to-day -day issues. If you find my content interesting, please do subscribe to my page and I have videos out on a weekly basis. So getting married, of course, is about happily ever after and the one and wanting to spend our lives with our loves. Well, that's the idea of it. But unfortunately, when you come from an Asian culture, such as mine, I'm an Afghan, and you know, it's the same with a lot of other, I think, minority um, backgrounds, that the parents tend to dictate when it comes time for us to be married or our life partners or our choices and decisions. And we really, be it whether it comes from us, whether we're the ones who want to get married at a very young age and just really are wanting to do this, or if it comes from our parents, from both sides, we really need to look at the why. These reasons are incredibly important in saving you a lot of headache later down the line. Reason being is that a lot of us when we don't get the freedom at home to do things we want to do and we have this pressure on us in not being able to live or fit into the Western society, we tend to use marriage as an escape, as a reason for freedom. Is that a reason to give you a long, happy, quality marriage? No, it's not. So if you're going to marry someone to escape and to get some freedom, chances are you probably won't see eye to eye later on down the line because your reasoning for wanting to spend your life with this person are quite selfish and you're not really getting to know the person or get to know yourself. You're using them as an escape and that's not gonna help anyone in the long run all your friends are married and you're not, so therefore you feel the pressure to should, that you should get married. Again, not a good enough reason. You are not your friends. You don't live the life they live. You don't come from the families they come from. You, what's written for you isn't written for them and vice versa. It's just because something worked for one person doesn't mean they'll work for you too. Everybody lives their own path and their own journeys and their own they go through their own learning curves and it's important for us to live according to our own individual unique needs, not the society and the communities. So once you look at all the reasons as to why you want to get married or why you don't, those could be the things that you communicate to your family to then be able to get it your way. And it's the same thing when it comes to your family. If they want you to get married because your cousins are married, or your neighbors got married, or they think that you're getting old, those are also not the right reasons. So that means that you are being pushed or pressured into getting married, 
due to generational curses. Now, what's that got to do with you? So this is where we need to really establish the reason from both parties. What is the need, what's the pressure for your parents to want to get rid of you in a sense, or to want to marry you off at such a young age? This video I wanted to make and I want to clarify that is mainly for people who are pressured or wanting to get married at a much younger age and or feel the rush to or feel the need to. And so when you're younger and you don't know yourself very well and your likes and your dislikes and who you are, it's very hard for you to figure out what you actually want or looking for in a partner. So if you give yourself time to become from a boy to a man, from a girl to a woman, and be a little bit more sure of yourself, a little bit more confident in yourself, you know your boundaries, therefore it will be unlikely that you would fall into abusive relationships. You also know your likes and dislikes, so what you look in a partner will change. If you're finding something attractive at 19, I assure you, you are not going to find the same qualities attractive at 29 or 39. So you're gonna keep growing, but they say that a person's brain doesn't really fully form or they, they're not fully into their adulthood or full potential mind till the age of 25. So you are not a full adult and obviously as an adult your preferences will change to as you are getting there or you're establishing yourself or you're becoming self um, aware or developing yourself into a person you want to be so of course those preferences would change so having said that some people get married young and they have brilliant relationships happily ever after and it works great for them this is very subjective, as are all my videos. Every situation is very different, every relationship is very different. But if you are someone who feels the pressures at a young age to get married, then this is, these are the things that you should consider before doing so. I want to keep giving disclaimers on this. Reason being, in my community, obviously, this is unheard of for someone like me to be unmarried at my age and live the life I live. and so on so i don't want anyone to feel like oh just because you went and rebelled now you're encouraging us or other people to do the same this is not that at all the reason i started doing these videos is that i could help people and guide people like an older sister kind of dynamic because unfortunately in our cultures these things are not very openly spoken to amongst family members all the sisters cousins parents so we really don't have that many people to turn to other than our peers and our peers are usually our own age so their life experiences tend to be not that far off ours or what they've been exposed to so therefore they also can't really guide and advise us in the way we want and that's why i'm making these videos and this particular topic i've had a numerous amount of messages about this and i feel like it's very very prominent and very, very present in our cultures uh, from Afghanistan, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Middle East, Iraq, Iran, you know, we, we go through similar things. And so a lot of people have dealt with this or are dealing with this. And it's important for us to have a place that we can turn to and really figure out. Totally off topic, let me come back to getting married. But that's why I wanted to do this disclaimer. Just to clarify that I'm not encouraging anyone to do anything they don't want to do. But if you find yourself in a position that you're struggling and just need some guidance, then there are things that you could do to save yourself headache and, you know, protect yourself from falling into an abusive relationship. And of course, in the society that we live in now with social media and how much emphasis there is on the life you live, who you with, who you hang out with, what you eat, where you go, what you wear, that People constantly post the best parts of their relationships and they make everything look very rosy. It's very, very important for us to consider that people only post the best parts. It's not real. It's a curated, filtered, perfected image to portray and what they want you to think, not what the reality is. So the grass isn't always green on the other side and things like having fun and Value, evaluating the relationship on a superficial level isn't going to give you longevity or necessarily 
a happy, fulfilled marriage. You have to have your own journey. You have to have your own pace. What works for you doesn't work for other people and vice versa. And we need to consider all of these things when making this decision. Which brings me to my next point. As much as being in love and loving and being loved back is amazing and fun, it's only about 30% of what could make a relationship or a marriage work or last. Because there are so many other things that we need to consider. The important thing is, is to look at your relationship as a true indication of what your marriage life will be like as a true reflection. And it's important to remember that if you're having issues now dating, you will have bigger issues if you move in together. And if you have issues while you're living together, your issues will not decrease or go away if you guys get married. And if you're married and you're having problems, bringing a child into the world isn't gonna make that go away your problems and issues in your marriage it's only going to make them worse and it's going to emphasize them the bigger the commitment the more at stake the bigger the problems if you can't agree on where to go for lunch or what to eat for dinner with your partner you are not going to agree on things such as religion child's upbringing marriage, where to live, family dynamics. If your partner isn't, doesn't have a good relationship with his family and to you that's incredibly important and you have a great relationship with your family, that's going to create problems in the long term. So when it comes to marriage, you've got to consider a lot more than just being in love. You need to consider all the other morals and values and see if you guys see eye to eye and match and understand each other and have the same beliefs. Having said that, of course, people grow and change and their wants and needs may be different, but if their character is still the same, their morals and values are the same, then most likely that you guys can overcome little personality traits or habits and hobbies that chop and change. So you need to consider a whole heap of other factors rather than just being in love or fancying the person or the prospect of marriage and being cute couple goals seems exciting. The prospect of having a wedding and wearing a beautiful dress is exciting. So you're throwing caution to the wind and kind of going with it. Which brings me to my next point that if you don't take these things into account and you do rush, rush into your decision and you do see these red flags, you feel like it's too late now. And you may make do and you may overlook it and hope for the best and hope that there's going to be some change. But in five years, seven years, ten years time, you will start building and building resent. And you're going to be so bitter and unhappy because there's a lot of things that rubs you the wrong way about your partner, but you just didn't take the time to figure yourself out to actually know what you will tolerate and what you won't. And who's there day to day to pick up the pieces and deal with the aggro? Only you and your partner, not the family, not those cousins that got married before you, so you rushed in to do the same, not those school friends that were around, only you and your partner. And now you're stuck in a rut or in an abusive relationship because you didn't take that time to really get to know what you're dealing with. And when it comes to parents, I know, of course, that you want what's best for your child and you want them to be settled, taken care of and married off. But understand that we live in an incredibly different society to what you guys grow, grew up in. And at the end of the day, every parent wants their child to be happy and taken care of and settled. So that's why marriage was the way forward or the only thing to do for a girl because that's what provided that safety net. But we don't need to be married to live a happy, fulfilled, successful life in this day and age. We can provide for ourselves, we can feed ourselves, we can clothe ourselves, we can do everything. But someone else can come and bring that to us. 
We don't need someone else to come and rescue us. We can do these things. And if some, if your child really wants to pursue a career, really wants to pursue a dream, really wants to do something else with their lives, or just don't feel the need already to get married, you have to understand that those generational curses that you carried don't necessarily need to be projected onto your children now. Things are very different. And so if it's about their happiness, then you should listen to what really makes them happy rather than what makes the community happy. When making this video, I had a long chat with my mom because whenever I do things that are a little bit culturally sensitive, I may not be that well involved in my culture or understand it as well because I've lived out in the West most of my life, but my mom does. So I always want to speak to her to get her guidance and advice on the situations and the topics. And this is purely coming from her. And she said to me that, you know, the, the, the issue here or one of the aspects that makes a lot of um, kids feel the pressure to get married is because the families tell them that's the only way forward. And she doesn't agree with that. And she thinks that you've got to honor each other and it has to be some sort of compromise and everybody has to be happy because at the end of the day, if it's happiness you want for your kid, pressuring them or forcing them into an unhappy marriage, is a sure way to guarantee that they're never going to be happy in their lives. And that's the last thing I'm sure as a parent anyone would want. I hope you guys found this helpful. I hope that this kind of gives you a little bit of a perspective on the matter. Um, please do share your experiences with me in the comments below. I'd love to know your opinions on it. Um, and if you've enjoyed this, please do subscribe to my page, like and comment on this video, share it with someone who may need it. And I will see you guys here again next week. Thank you so much for watching. Mwah.